Okay, one, you don't just pop up here. You call first. And two, F soldier boy. I don't give a mother effing doodle how he checked out. Ah, bollocks. He didn't die like no hero. I'll wager he went out on his knees begging like a right cunt. What the f***? <laughs> Sorry, love. Look, if there's a weapon out there, it killed Soldier Boy, and then it can kill Homelander, and that's got to be worth something. Now, we're working our way through his old team. Frenchie and Kamiko are starting with the Crimson Cutters, and I'm going to hit up Gunpowder. Sounds like you've got everything covered. This ain't just anyone. It's Soldier Boy. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. I'm back from vacation. Yay, Steve's back. <laughs> <laughs> So this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about the boys season three, episode two, entitled The Only Man in the Sky. So, Steve, give us that little synopsis I was able to find. Sure, sure. So the synopsis is Homelander, America's greatest soup, defending our shores from sea to shining sea. Today, America honors him on his birthday. Vought Shopping Network is celebrating by offering an exclusive Homelander, Homelander limited birthday edition gold coin. Yeah, I didn't see that in the episode, but maybe that's on the merch. <laughs> uh, that was actually <laughs> taken from Amazon directly. Oh, I don't okay. know how... They just put that there, but it's so vague, but there's so much more involved. There is. And there's a lot more. We're, yeah, we're going to go that in depth with the actual episode when we uh, we get into our initial thoughts, which should be now. So what were your <laughs> initial thoughts? I So I, I watched it the first time immediately when I came back from vacation. I watched episode one, which, by the way, you and Rob did excellent covering Thanks. episode one uh i that one was rough <laughs> um, uh, but it you know it it, uh, it got us right back into the swing of, of what the boys is mm -hmm. and uh and so uh so i watched this one i want to say right after i watched episode one and and enjoyed it but i didn't like there was a lot I didn't remember. So when I watched it for the second time today, uh, there was a, a lot of things that I was like, Oh, I forgot that happened. And I forgot this happened. And so it was really cool to, to rewatch it. And, uh, I may have to watch it again, uh, maybe before I watch episode three, but I got to watch episode three and four tonight to get ready. Oh, that's <laughs> it's just fine. been a crazy week, but I, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. The, uh, you know, when, and I'll get into some of this with my notes. We got a lot of character development from different people in this one that was oh, really, yeah. really cool to see. And I, I really enjoyed that that part of it. Yeah, I completely agree with you with the character development. Butcher has changed a little bit. Huey has changed. Mm -hmm. Homelander, well, he's changing into more <laughs> of a psycho. And then we have all the other people around them. We see more of Mother's Milk. Mm -hmm. We get more information about him and his past. Frenchie. Uh, Kimiko and a few others. So, uh, yeah, I overall, I enjoyed the episode and it was eye opening, but a lot of what I liked about it was the, the gimmickiness of it kind of because you got Vaughtland and mm -hmm. we get to encounter that with Frenchie and Kimiko and we get to see, I think her name's Crimson Glory. If I'm Crimson Countess, Countess. Yeah, there I looked we it go. up. Lori Holden, Lori Holden, Lori Holden, Holden. Crimson Countess, As Crimson Countess. Yes, and her relation with the the soups, as it were, because they dated all the way back, and how she retaliates during that. Uh, we get Huey going to some sort of uh, like not a foster home, but pretty much where yeah. they just drop kids off. To be yeah, adopted. I've got some of that in my notes. The Red River, Red River, something uh, halfway house or something like that. But it was called Red River. Was yeah. uh, was interesting, and it was him getting information for Butcher as usual, and uh, it was a lot based upon uh, Newman herself, right? And on top of that, we see more of Homelander's craziness, which I do enjoy, mm -hmm. and uh, more of Ashley. I'm loving that we get a little bit more of Ashley with every episode and where it's more eye-opening and it, it's crazy. I just love Colby Menefee's character within the actual show. Yeah, she's great. And uh, we do get to see something new. So there's a new character that 
they're talking about Soldier Boy, and then within this, we get to see Gunpowder, which was played by Sean Patrick Flannery, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, a very different looking Sean Patrick Flannery than the, the last time. You know, I, I saw him in person a few years ago yeah. at a at a con, and he was, uh, <laughs> you know, he was clean shaven, his hair was combed, and so seeing this this gunpowder character, I was like, that's really just. It was mind blowing the transformation that he. Yeah, he was opposite of what we, you and I, both saw and witnessed live in front of him. He, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, back then he was more chiseled muscular in tone tuned in and then we see him on the show he's kind of like he hasn't shaven for months he's wearing his uniform looks like he's overweight looks like he drank a lot <laughs> it was very um it was very from kick-ass to jim carrey it was very the 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 the, the, the change of, of yeah the change of body type and everything because when you watch kick-ass 2 you barely recognize that that's jim carrey yeah in exactly that, in that as that character and and it's the same kind of thing for me when i saw that that was sean patrick flannery i was like what that's okay okay i guess <laughs> <laughs> you know uh but yeah, but uh, sadly, uh, we we'll, won't we'll see any more of him unless we see flashbacks. Uh, eh, yeah, that, that is I mean, true, and it might not even be him. Put your cut his head off. So, yeah. yeah, put your cut his head off. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll get into that too. We'll, we'll get uh, into that when we talk about our top fives, which we'll probably go into soon. But overall, I I really did enjoy the episode. As every episode happens, I do enjoy it as we watch. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking they brought that a game with this particular season and. I'm waiting for something kooky, wacky, and crazy towards the middle, and then it go off the deep end by the the final episode of the season. <laughs> you know, I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to reference the deep. <laughs> Not without my dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's one of the cool catchphrases within that. Uh, brought to you by VTV TV for women. <laughs> All that right. Beginning. All right, so with that, we'll we'll move right into our uh, top thoughts or our top fives. Next, run the one. Uh-uh. Sorry, mate. There you go. Nice piece. Welcome. Next, come through. So, Steve, uh, let's start off with you. What, what was sure. Your, uh, sure. We kind of already started talking about it a little bit, but Butcher, you, you know, taking the serum or not taking it was a little confusing to me, even the second watch, that that, beer, that very beginning where he's kind of having a dream, but we're not sure. And I think you and Rob kind of speculated about the whether Homelander was actually in his apartment or he just was imagining it. And so yeah. I, you know, then we see him in this, in this part of the episode. It's either a dream or he's talking to the TV. And he even there's a moment where Becca's son is on the TV and then he wakes up uh, after we think he took the serum or he didn't take this. I don't I was confused at the very beginning. <laughs> Obviously, he takes the serum at some point. Yeah, he because does. then at the end of the episode, he has he has powers. But it was really cool seeing the, the kids speak to him from the TV. And then he wakes up to the laptop ch- chiming and he opens up the laptop and there's the, the kid on the Zoom. And he's saying it's 803. You told me to call after eight. And Aww. and, uh, you know, then later in the episode, he watches that video that uh, that uh, Ryan, that's the son's the son's name. Yeah. Ryan made about with his mom's voice over the the kind of Lego characters there that was just heart wrenching to hear you know but it was it was great and we got to see this softer side of, of butcher. butcher yeah you know and and then of course when he goes and meets with Mallory and sees sees the boy and sees that he's okay but then at the end when he finds out that Mallory was involved with the soldier boy death now so we're obviously going to find out more about Mallory and what she was doing with the CIA and with soups you know 40 years ago hmm. so so yeah it's just a, a lot of again it's kind of seeing more of butcher and his character was was really really cool and then of course at the end we're gonna find out I'm, I'm assuming the next episode I haven't watched it yet I know it's out there uh, I assume we're gonna find out whether the compound v24 actually does only last 24 hours or you know, if it's going to be longer than that or what's going to happen, what side effects Butcher's going to have after taking it. But we definitely see him at the end of this episode. He's got the enhanced strength. He's bulletproof. He's got the laser eyes. And uh, yeah, it was just <laughs> cool. Yeah, it was cool to see him like that, too. He became the one thing he hates mm-hmm. of all things, you know. 
And I, I do agree with you. It's like, that was really heart wrenching with, uh, with Ryan and that call and that video that mm-hmm. was hard to watch because you could see it on butcher's face. He was struggling and you could see the pain in his face because, you know, it's like, this is all he has left of his wife mm-hmm. and he can't even be involved because of his hatred towards Homelander. And then he's forced into doing all these, these actions, especially with Huey and, and the government and everything now as a contracted uh, employee, as it were. Mm-hmm. Well, my first thought that I really loved about the, the episode was Vaultland with Kimiko and Frenchie mm-hmm. and dealing with Crimson Countess. So seeing everything about the history of Soldier Boy and then, you know, her singing her song about it in tribute. I thought that was interesting. And then the interaction with Crimson Countess at the very end and the whole chase. And then she winds up just like killing people. Oh dur- man. That during was gruesome. Chase. That was gruesome. It was like, like an amusement park that went array and just went crazy. And you, all you just see is blood splatter, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's good to see a new character too, because I'm sure we're going to see this character again later. Oh on. yeah. Oh yeah, and this was one of mine was Crimson Countess, and just the whole thing about I, I, was she was she like slight was she snorting cocaine or she was putting something in yep. her coffee? It looked like I don't. It was yeah, there were drugs. weird, <laughs> and she's calling you know for these fans to come in, and then uh, and we get to see this is one of those moments that I'll I'll, I'll kind of go on to my next kind of point here, c- kind of goes along with it mm-hmm. is we see the Kumiko, we see the development of her character when she's talking when she sees that guy killed. And those two kids sitting there, and I, I guess she just assumed the guy that was killed was their father. I thought the guy who was killed was in like a Homelander costume or something. Mm-hmm. Like he looked like he was a, a you know, a, a what are those people at Disneyland that dress up in the outfits? That kind of thing. Oh that's, yeah, that's who she killed. Um, but then at the end, you know, she's talking to Frenchie, and she's like, her and her brother never got to grow up and, and be real kids. And, and then she has done the same thing to these kids. And Frenchie's like, no, it wasn't your fault. And I just love the, this interaction between them because we know, like, I know last season or the, the first, I guess it was second season. Um, there, he kind of tried to kiss her and that didn't, that didn't go well. Yeah. And so we know it's not a romantic relationship between the two of them but it still is a very powerful friendship it, it's a loving friendship where yeah th- there's respect and he cares for her and she deeply cares for him as well there's nothing romantic or sexual regarding it yeah and it, it's like him protecting her and her protecting him at the same mm-hmm. time and i i yeah. do appreciate that that kind of relationship and it is sad because kimiko is not given that same thing, that experience or that Disney experience, as it were, where you got to see these uh, characters on the street in costume and and have that kid oriented feeling of going to these uh, amusement parks or these shows or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And now she it kind of got screwed up for her with her first experience. Well, she at least she had a good 15, 20 minutes before it went array. Yeah, and then, uh, but the fact is that she felt responsible for ruining that for other kids. So it shows a lot of sympathies from her. Shows that she has, she's very much human, like everybody else. She's just gifted with these abilities, Mm -hmm. and you know, and then she's you know put on this task to deal with all these other people as well. Unfortunately, it's the wrong time, wrong place. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, so that was kind of my number two as well. It kind of piggybacked off from yours. Um, so I guess we go to my next one. Sure. Okay. Um, just let, I want to talk for a few minutes about Victoria Newman and this Nadia and, and Huey, you know, the very end of the la- of the first episode, Huey witnesses her and he figures out that she was the head popper, that she killed all the people in Congress mm-hmm. and it, it, it it seems kind of a leap, but I guess I can see how he would figure it out. And then he goes to that that uh, group home or whatever it was, orphanage, and orphanage. Yeah, and he finds out about these kids. And it was again, this is one of those. Okay, we'll suspend our disbelief a little bit because all he does is plug in 
a USB. He somehow plugs in a USB drive yeah. to this woman's computer without her seeing him, and it just automatically downloads everything out of her. Yeah, without it being heart. acknowledged on the computer. That's actually yeah. my next point too. It's like him okay. going there and getting that intel, and you know, of course, he has to say. And the kid who's teleporting comes in front of her, him constantly, and she goes, "Yeah." He goes, and he points to the TV. Oh wait, you're with Starlight. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Oh, I may have signed us up to adopt a kid. I thought was great. Exactly. <laughs> and he goes, um, "I guess my sperm isn't swimming well, <laughs> and we're looking to adopt, and we, I, you know, with a soup of a mom, and blah blah blah." <laughs> yeah. kind of worked it out. But the fact is that he puts that USB drive as they're looking at stuff in the files of these kids. He sticks it in there. Normally with any computer, it acknowledges that there's an external drive going yeah, in. Yeah, exactly. Where it's going to say that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's going to pop up there on something. Yeah, so I it was a little hard, but I was like, okay, we'll, we'll take it. Because they needed to get the information yeah. that Nadia is – that Victoria Newman was Nadia – and that's we see that video of Stan taking her out of the group home, mm -hmm. and that's when when Huey realizes that everything is rigged. He says it's all Vots behind everything, correct? And he calls yeah. Butcher, and I'm I'm thinking that's when Butcher took the serum because you know Huey tells him we've got to do whatever it takes, uh, and exactly. so whatever it takes is whatever I could get, and he was given that. Now, mind mm -hmm. you, you know he has that in the bulldog cookie jar <laughs> yeah and he's got two more doses of it at least yeah there, and he, right? it or looks did, like he didn't use the whole thing yeah he, he, it didn't sure. look like he even took the whole one shot mm -hmm. it was just a little bit of it you know so that means if he gets two dosage per so maybe six for yeah. 24 hours who knows yeah so yeah that's that's kind of just just this interesting interplay here that we've seen and i'm, I'm excited to watch the next episode to see where kind of take it from there yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess on to my next one. Sure. That would be Ashley's continued issues with the soups constantly, and especially with Homelander being the main issue with all his antics. And then mm -hmm. and he, he keeps coming out more and more, especially on TV, and outing his thoughts and how he feels like it, it's being rigged. He's taken, being taken advantage of. Everybody's taking advantage of him. And I'm starting to think with this woman, she's going to have to get a wig sometime soon because she keeps pulling <laughs> her hair out. <laughs> I love Chloe Menifee. She's a beautiful woman. But I see that they stepped up her character a little bit with her character development as far as mm -hmm. being a little bit more stronger instead of meekish, which I yeah. really enjoy. Yeah, and she's playing a much bigger role within the Vought organization now. She's kind of yeah. in charge of the, you know, her boss is, I think her boss got her head popped in that, that, uh, end of the last season. So she kind of took over that role of handling the soups, like you said. And I you love that scene at the end when Homelander just loses it and she's trying to cut the feed and he's like, Roger, don't stop the feed or something like that. And I'm just yeah. like, Oh no, this guy is losing it again. And he's doing it publicly, but this time he says, I'm not going to apologize. And so uh, I guess we'll see where that, and I've got more to talk about Homelander later is one of my points as well. But, <laughs> but yeah, Ashley is really, really cool. I'm glad we're seeing more of her in, in this, this season. Yeah. It's a character that was very underrated, but they're, they're bringing through. I really do enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, my next one is, uh, we talked a little bit about it already, but kind of Marvin's obsession over Soldier Boy. Did, did, now was, was it, what, did they name Soldier Boy as the soup that his dad was obsessed with? Yes. Previously. Okay. They did. Okay. I couldn't remember if that was the, the thing. Cause you know, he's got all those clippings. And then I love that moment when he goes to his wife. Again, we see some more character development when he tells his wife that he's getting drawn into this thing again. And she tells him, you know, go for it. Just go back to Butcher, get closure on this kind of thing. But she does ask him to be safe, to try to be safe. Yeah. And I'm just like, you just put him in harm's way, basically. So it's it's going to be interesting to see more about this as as he goes forward when he comes back to Butcher and what all the information they're gathering about Soldier Boy. They now know that it wasn't in the nuclear – in that nuclear power plant that he died. There was some other way mm. that he died and we just don't know what that was. Gunpowder says he was – he didn't see it or he didn't witness it. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to yeah. see what's what's going on there. Exactly. Yeah, I, I really did enjoy that engagement. 
Uh, I really want to see that where we do find out what happened to Soldier Boy. I'm curious if they actually do find him. I would really love mm. to get that uh, confirmation. Yeah. And and Gunpowder kind of paved the way. I think it was kind of like foreshadowing of what we're going to get later on, which would be great. Yeah, I, I'm interested because, you know, there was so much advertisement and so much uh, of Jensen Ackles playing this character. And here we are. Yeah, I mean, I know we're only two episodes in. We've only seen him on movie screens and kind of had him referred to. We've not actually seen him do very much yeah. as Soldier Boy. And so I'm a little bit, I'm hoping, you know, part of me is hoping we're either going to get a flashback where we actually get to see him playing the part, or maybe it's it's going to be revealed that he's actually alive, that he's that he's survived and mm. he's somewhere being held or, or something like that. So or, or maybe I even I both, who knows? Maybe, yeah. It's it's going to be interesting. And, you know, the whole thing with, with Gunpowder, that shootout between him and Butcher, where he's ricocheting the bullets was so good and just... It was really just that character. I wish we could get more of the gunpowder character, but, uh, and I, I'm sure that whole convention was, I think there was a, there was a bit of a, there was a card in front of the first, the first episode where in light of some of the things that have happened, they realized that some of this stuff might be triggering for people, but that whole convention was an interesting parody of what, uh, what really happens. Yeah. Well, next up for me would be uh, well, Homelander's meltdown. <laughs> yeah, at the at the what is it called? Uh, it's the who wants to be a superhero. No, this was his birthday celebration. Was, oh, was I thought the, it was the, the uh, one they okay. were doing. I thought it was his. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah, because they actually they did a whole test screening, and then Starlight has to wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday! Mm-hmm. He, she was unhappy <laughs> doing it. Yeah. Yeah, and he wanted her to sing a sexy, sexy, and and she it stands like it, I'll, I've got more, but go ahead with your point because I've got more on this as well. Well, the fact is, is that you know the the way it, he just spins out of control and just like constantly vomiting all this crap out of his mouth about him, 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 and it's so annoying, especially with like even with the uh, when they then when they were doing the dress rehearsal for it with Starlight mm-hmm. itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, the head of Vought at that point is just like, well, she's got a higher rating than you are, and without her, you're not going to be doing anything. And and they keep using this to hold over his head, and he knows this, and he's mm-hmm. only going to retaliate even more so. And it seems like all of them know this, but they just keep pushing the envelope, wanting him to go crazy. I'm like, yeah, I, I, like as if he did like what he envisioned in his head last season, mm-hmm. last when, season. Right. Yeah. Like he destroyed all those people with his laser eyes or whatever and, and just yeah. killed like and wiped out a whole area of people. Like it was like mm-hmm. a few blocks radius. Yeah, it was. It, it, but, the, you know, and but then we see. Yeah. It, it, yeah. His meltdown at the celebration of his, you know, it's interesting because the, the triggering thing for him was Stormfront dying. You know, by, biting her own tongue off and, and choking on it, it was just weird. Um, but that was kind of the trigger for him because he has that whole rooftop, uh, oh, discussion with the girl, with the girl yeah. where he compares himself to Jesus and he says he was immaculately conceived as well and that they're gods and we've just lost a god with Stormfront dying. And then you cut to him in the, the birthday celebration. He forces the girl to jump off the building and she lands right there in front of Ashley. Yeah. Uh, and he doesn't save her. And then, like you said, we go into this meltdown on the stage there, right in front of the camera, in front of it. So we're going to see what the fallout from that is going to be in the next, in the next, uh, episode. But I did love you know, you're talking about Stan. And again, Stan kind of coming to Starlight's defense and saying, Hey, she's more popular than you. People like her yep. and they don't <laughs> like you. And now you're just reinforcing that whole thing. So it's, it's going to be interesting to, to see how, this uh, this plays out with with Homelander. I'm I'm uh, excited to see where it's going to go from here and watch the next couple episodes. Yeah, I think Stan has a pulse on what the people want out in the world, mm-hmm. and it's not working with what Homelander wants. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of it for me. I don't really have anything else. Um, well, the only thing I had to add was like the ending with Butcher and confronting Gunpowder. And how he started going after him after, like, you know, I, I'm not sure what was, what was it exactly? Was that a, a gun trade show or something? Yeah, so, 
probably I, he said Vought Rifle Association, so I, okay. I assume I assume they're they're trying to make a a kind of a play on the National Rifle Association and, yes. and the conventions that they have. And I've been to a few of those conventions. Please, no one at me. This is just who I am. Well, I've been, I've been there to a, too. I've, I've been to a couple of them. You know, they they fill the entire Atlanta center that that world. Congress whatever Center. it's called. Yeah. Yeah. All, all floors and everything. So it's, uh, I'm sure that's kind of what they were trying to parody there, especially like where he walks through the metal detector and he shows the guy his gun and the guy's like, Oh, nice piece. Go ahead on in, you know, and then they showed all those kids <laughs> handling the guns. It's, it's, uh, like a convention for the national. And like I said, the NRA, um, annual meeting is, uh, is the ones that we've been to where they have, they have trade show. It's like a trade show. Yeah. Yeah. Different- I've been to ones locally. But nothing mm-hmm. to that extreme with yeah, my father. Yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, it's fine. You know, it's like go look at guns, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But the the interaction between butcher and gunpowder in the urinal, and then how he just like butcher just like attacks him verbally about how he was a uh, soldier boy's little boy toy, and yeah. it's always that about that sidekick. You know, mm-hmm. they always talk about it. The boy wonder being Batman's abuse child. He's like, he's molesting a little yeah. boy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it really got under gunpowder's collar about that. And he, yeah. and then that's when the fight ensues and he's trying to get more information and gunpowder turns around saying, what you're with CIA. And then the right. whole fight continues and it continues on into the garage at, at a certain point too. Mm-hmm. And then that's when, you know, Butcher comes out with his uh, eye lasers, and cuts him in yep. half after pummeling him. Yep. Yeah. And uh, to me, that was like, whoa. All right, Butcher yeah. went the next level. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, like, you know, he shoots, the guy shoots him and, and Butcher falls down and the guy thinks he's dead. And then, of course, we see Butcher get up and he reveals that the bullets have, have not penetrated his skin. And I'm like, oh, he took it. And then he breaks the gun mm-hmm. and he's just, he's beating the guy up because the guy, you know, he's, I don't know how super he is. I don't think anymore. he's supered at all. <laughs> um, yeah, he he might not be, but he, I mean, he had the reflexes were pretty good about shooting that gun and making yeah. sh- ricochet and stuff. So I think he's got some sort of Hawkeye kind of thing going on. But but oh, yeah, it, it, it was yeah, it was really <laughs> it was really cool. Let's see. The the only other thing I've got, I think that we haven't uh, we kind of already talked about that. A train's new look. Yeah, A Train. <laughs> you guys talked about it last week that A Train's kind of getting a little pudgy there, and uh, he's still, you know, it's interesting that I guess he still has to maintain his caloric intake, even though he's not running. That yeah. seems maybe because his metabolism is Faster. is going, but yeah, uh, but yeah, that was that was funny. He's got that that new suit on, and, and Ashley's just like, "Where's wardrobe? <laughs> get me wardrobe!" And <laughs> Homelander tells him to get off the stage. But uh, uh, yeah, I've got one of my quotes is from A Train here when we get to quotes. Well, one I had. Well, we'll go to quotes right now. I only have one, and that would be Homelander's to A Train saying, "Get off my effing stage, you girdle wearing f." <laughs> Because he was literally wearing a girdle because he has to maintain the Hold court. his gut in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so the, I've got two. And uh, one is uh, from A-Train where he's talking about that pitch. And he says, I want to get back back in touch with my roots. Like in roots. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know? And then the other guy, the guy from Preacher that we just like, – I can't remember the actor's name. But uh, is talking to him. He's like, you know you don't care anything about your roots. Um, yeah, but uh, but then uh, the, the only other one I've got is from Homelander, and it's uh, when he looks at the girl and he says, "The only man in the sky is me." Yep. So he said the na- he said the title of the episode. Yep. Mic drop. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. Yeah. Well, that that's all I had. I didn't have any extra notes or anything, but uh, we will be continuing more about the boys as the episodes come out. Obviously, they dropped the first three. Rob and I did the first episode. Steve, you and I just did the uh, the second. We're going to do three. Four is out already, but what are your thoughts? Should we do three and four together to keep up, or should we just uh, do them consecutively, episode by episode? I, I'd rather try to do, go just uh, episode by episode, so I don't know what night next week we could. I, we might be able to do three and four together next week. Yeah. Just so we can get caught up, because then we're going to have episode five come out. Yeah. And that's on uh, a Friday anyway, so we, if we do it early next week, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I think I think try to do three and four together 
or uh, this for week, episode. as it were, because it's coming yeah. up. But, you know, we could do it on a weeknight and then get that out to everybody. And it won't yeah. take it just like this episode. It, it shouldn't take that long, but uh, it'll be a, a brief overview. But uh, we will let you guys know when we do that, because we will be be covering Miss Marvel as well. So we'll broach that that conversation when we get to doing Miss Marvel. Exactly. Uh, the only news we've got, I, I don't know if you heard, I'm sure, well, I'm sure you have, is that The Boys Season 4 has been renewed. Yep. They're, they are going to do a Season 4, so uh, we'll definitely be having more of The Boys to talk about once this season finishes. I'm I'm excited for that. Yeah, awesome. More Boys, and a lot of people who I know are really getting into the, uh, the, the show itself. They're going back, they're going to their comic shops. They do have the trade paperbacks or uh, the uh, uh, compendiums out there, too. So you guys could go check that out if you really want to catch up. Obviously, uh, the comic might be a little bit more extreme than the actual show itself. So don't right. be surprised. So uh, pick it up and uh, you have been warned. But uh, we will be covering the show itself. And this is as graphic as I, I think we've been, you know, before we... We'd done Preacher before, so Preacher was pretty much as graphic, but the only difference is with this, it's uh, more sexual, more nudity, and uh, I guess a little bit more vulgar. <laughs> but yeah. it, it is entertaining, nonetheless. <laughs> All Very right. cool. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to skip podcast recommendations and uh, YouTube recommendations, but we'll go right into how you could submit your feedback. Well, obviously, we can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. Uh, if ratings are available, we'd love for you to give us a, a rating or a review, and we'll give you a shout-out. Awesome. And check out our new website, panelstopixelspodcast.com. We'll be uh, completely launching up by the end of July. I'm still working on a few kinks. I got some people on Bluehost to help me out. And nice. we'll get that up to you guys, ready and enabled. Very cool. We have a Facebook group, which is just uh, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. That's panels to pixels. The T.O. is spelled out right in the middle. Awesome. And we are on Twitter and you can find us at panels to pixels panels, the number two pixels. We have an email address, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The T.O. is spelled out right there in the middle and the number one at gmail.com. You can find us on YouTube, and all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. And once you do, you'll see our graphic, our image from our uh, podcast player on your podcast player of choice. It'll be there on YouTube. All you have to do is give us a thumbs up if you like what's going on with the content. It's very much the same podcast, just on YouTube. Subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better. And thank you. Exactly. We are on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out in words, Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. And like always, we like to have you listeners check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. Uh, we highly recommend them all. Wilhelm being uh, Ben Beck's pride and joy, and it's, very, it's done very well. He's had a few celebrity guests recently. Uh, I believe he, uh, he just interviewed the guy who did the voice of Red Dead Redemption the game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and he's got a few others on, on the, the pipeline right now to do as well as his regular content, which we all love the melting pat podcast zero and so much more. Just go to next level radio online.com and then check us all out there. Very cool. And where else can listeners hear us? Steve? Um, well, I send voicemails to various podcasts now that I'm back. Uh, once I get into the swing of things, I'll be sending those voicemails to our friends podcast. You'll hear my voice uh, a couple of times there, uh, different podcasts that I that I like to interact with. Awesome. Well, I could also be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network with Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. All you have to do is look for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. The last ep two episodes that came out were uh, we covered Army of Darkness and I believe uh, what's coming out next is going to be the continuation of our uh, Planet of the Apes movies with uh, with Jerry. So nice. uh, check that out when that comes out as well. We're working on a few other things, too. Uh, with Predator coming out, or the... What is it? I, I'm, what are they calling this? Prey? Prey. Prey. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Steve and I might actually just do the original Predator. 
And then when uh, Prey comes out, we'll cover that when it comes out as well. Very nice. So uh, that's pretty much our show. I just want to thank everyone for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.